So now we're going to talk about a function. So here are two pairs of quantities that we saw in the last lesson. Each pair uh, has a relationship that could be defined as a function. So we have time in seconds since the dog's on our left and the total number of times the dog has barked. And time in seconds since the owner left and the total distance in feet that the dog has walked. So choose in, uh, choose one pair of quantities and express the relationship as a function. So what we're gonna do is choose this first one. And we have time in seconds since the dog owner left and the number of barks. So in the um, function, which variable is independent? Well, the indiv independent variable is the input. So I would input a time, and then the output of the function would be how many times a dog has barked. So the independent variable, or the input, is time. And the dependent variable is uh, the uh, total barks. So now to write this out, blank is a function of blank. And what you do here is you put the dependent variable because this would be your output of the function. It's a function of, of the independent variable. So what I mean by that is the total number of barks is a function of the time. And on there, what that means is the number of barks really is going to kind of depend on the time. So the longer the time is, the longer number of times the dog would have barked. And that, that's going to vary based on the dog. Some people would have a dog that barks a lot. Some people's dog might not bark at all. So now to graph this. We could put our time on the x-axis since it's the independent variable. And then we would have our barks on the y-axis. And in this case, um, we could put time and then we could put barks one, two, three, four, and five. And maybe here at time zero, our, our dog didn't bark, didn't bark. Then it may have barked just one time, just kind of sit still. Then it may have barked uh, twice, three times, four times, and so on. So uh, what we would do here, the time is continuous, but the number of barks would kind of jump up. And this would actually be an interesting look at a function. But if this were time, let's say, seconds, so one second, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine seconds. At three seconds when the dog barked, we would put an open dot here and fill this in with a closed dot. And what would that would mean is the dog barked here, um, but the function doesn't go there. So at time of say three seconds, the dog does one bark, not zero barks and one bark. Every input is gonna only have one output. Same idea would happen here. So this function stays at one bark. And then when we went to six seconds, we would put an open dot here to say that the function is not at one bark anymore. It moves up here to the closed dot, which is at two barks. And then between six and seven seconds, it stays there. I would put an open dot and then put a closed dot there, an open dot a closed dot, and then move it on there. So again, this is a function. If you notice, every input
has exactly one output. Let's rewrite that for you. And how you can see that on the graph, if I draw a vertical line, it's only going to touch the function once. Even through here, if you notice, it's not touching the function at the open dot, but it would touch a function there. So on a graph, if you draw a vertical line to be a function, it only touches once. And a function for every input, there's only one output.